so there we are, XR Pub Crawl, here we go. Uh, I'm Lisa Payton and um, I lead this group of mighty pioneers who are looking to use the latest AI and XR technologies to, to get better marketing and comms outcomes. And so I'm super excited. We have a very special guest today. Martin Petkoff is here and he is the author of the um, textbook that I'm using for my XR marketing course. And I know many of my um, graduate students are coming in today and are very excited to be able to talk to their textbook author. So Martin, thank you so much for joining us today. So good to see you. What a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. And I'm equally excited Yay. to speak with people who are actually engaging with the book. <laughs> yes. Very good. Um, well, let's dive into a few announcements before. Um, so the way it works, most of you know, we'll go through a few announcements. This is very casual. Please chime in um, if you have experience with anything that I'm talking about over the next several minutes. Um, so I will share my screen. And there's so much that has been going on, um, I'm sure, as most of you know. Um, so here we go. So welcome on in. Uh, today we're going to be uh, go visiting uh, Roblox. Um, I got a request from some XR pub crawl regulars to spend a little more time in Roblox. So we're going to do Gucci today. Um, there's also a very cool Adidas pop-up store uh, that we will be visiting as well. Um, and it's a very it'll, it's a great way to kind of see a couple different approaches um, on building out these experiences. So I'm excited about that. Uh, question of the month. So everybody help me out, please. What are your favorite resources for AI marketing education? Uh, um, how are we getting smart um, outside of, you know, the series of, of books that um, Martin has written on, on the metaverse? But, um, you know, it's, it's a struggle. I, I'm feeling the struggle of really trying to stay relevant when, when all these things are coming at us so quickly. So please share your resources in chat um, and I will aggregate those. Um, I'm writing, spoiler alert, my next article that I'm writing is about the best AI marketing resources. So um, you very well could get a shout out in my next, art, next article if you provide some, some resources that are great for us. So please post it will. Um, so a few announcements, believe it or not, it's only about four months away before Augmented World Expo. Everyone knows that that is the big moment for the pub crawl. Nathan is here. Hi, Nathan. Uh, Nathan is our wonderful partner uh, who has been working with us to provide a very cool VIP curated XR pub crawl experience at this conference. We'll be doing that again this year. So um, I like to, to talk about this so that you can put it on your calendars and, and be there. Um, I plan on attending and it'll be a um, an amazing time for us to gather together in person. So I cannot wait. Um, I also wanted to call out um, a new segment um, featured friend of the pub crawl. I, you know, I'm really beginning to get a nice group of regulars coming to the, the, the pub crawl. And I, that was the intention all along. So I wanted to say thanks and, and call out a few of you that have been coming on a regular basis. So this will be the first of many featured friends of the pub crawl. And the first one that I wanted to uh, call it was Claire. So Claire, I know that you are here. Would you like to unmute? I'd love for you to unmute and maybe just introduce yourself and um, share why you love coming to the pub crawl, why you join our group. Hi there. Um, <laughs> sorry, you caught me off guard a little bit. I have enjoyed coming for almost a year, probably over a year now. And I feel like I just learn so much every single time I come. Just starting to come here last spring, I think, really is what got me into um, this whole environment and this whole industry. I just didn't have that level of familiarity with marketing in XR. So that's uh, been really transformative for me and helped me get to the place I am today. So uh, I enjoyed, you know, continuing to come because I learned something new every single time. Yay. Awesome. And Claire, um, uh, Claire and I met in person when we were at AWE together. She flew all the way out from New York and uh, joined in the, the festivities. And I got to sit um, near her, I think, I think next to you actually at our, at our dinner. Um, and what an amazing opportunity. So um, I was just so impressed with your experience. Um, you're extremely well-spoken. You're, you know, I, I'm just very excited about the potential you have in this industry. And I love that you join us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it a lot. 
Yay. Uh, and y'all, if you are regulars, I'm coming for you. Um, be prepared. Um, I'll be asking others of you to be the featured friend. So um, <laughs> just know that, that that's a thing now. Um, so our next pub crawl, I also like to just announce, um, we do the pub crawl every third Friday. So the next one will be the 15th of March at noon. Um, I'm very open for topics. Um, so let me know what you'd like to see and we'll make it we'll make it happen. Okay, let's get into news. And this comes from our friend Dave. Dave is here. Dave shared this video. I'm not going to play the video. I've got the link in my in my show notes. Um, but this is brand new, right? This is brand new. This is Sora. It's it's quite amazing. If you go to the the website, this is a a new um, video AI video tool from OpenAI. It's uh, by all accounts amazing. Um, I think goodbye runway. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's a place for runway.ml. But, um, you know, I, this looks like it's going to blow the doors off of that tool. Um, but it's I, I, only available to a select few right now, and that does not include me. So all I have to go by is what I'm reading and what I'm seeing uh, in videos. So um, it's anybody ha been hands in? Um, I know we've got some developers here. Maybe you've been inside it. You, you can give us your, your first account, first person account. I have I have not been direct, but I have talked to a few that have been. And the rumor, well, no one would confirm this, but supposedly they've the reason it is so freaking good is they've been using Unreal Engine 5 as oh, wow. training data and they're using uh synth there, I believe there's some synthetic data here as well with this, which is gonna be one of the first really big pushes where they're using synthetic data. So I don't know. Uh, we shall see. But I uh, I have hopes. I've had a couple of uh, other interesting application journeys, but we can talk about that later. Yeah. Can you explain the synthetic data? Yeah. So uh, right now you have, when you look at these training sets, especially the ones for uh, the really functional models like ChatGPT4, they've got like 35 billion, some somewhere like that, uh, somebody correct me on the, the number, but massive, massive numbers uh, inside there that they're training these large language models on. And the next, the next iteration will be in the trillions. So to actually train that much data, there's a new kind of technique to build synthetic data and information to actually train these large language models on. So, so there's a AI lot of really crazy data research to train there. them. Sorry, AI data that is AIs that are actually used to create more data to then train more AI. Correct. It's synthetic data as opposed <clears throat> to uh, you know actual like libraries of movies or whatever okay. um, that they're wow. building on. Oh my god! It's neither, people a lot smarter than me are you know creating imaginary numbers inside the black box or something. I don't know. <laughs> Awesome. I, I love getting this this techie you know insight. But you know, for those of us that maybe aren't as technical, um, you know, go ahead and check out the Vimeo um video that, that Dave shared. The link is there. It will tell you all you need to know about the potential of this tool. Um, I think, you know, as we have seen, there's been so many groundbreaking tools coming out and they just are coming out like at lightning speed. And I think this will be another one of those. Um, and for my view, OpenAI is just crushing it, but that's a, that leads to this <laughs> co-pilot. Yeah. So co-pilot had a big moment. And if you read my newsletter, you, you got my perspective on it. Um, I would love to hear others. I mean, long story short, um, co-pilot had a big Super Bowl ad. They're pitching themselves as your everyday AI, AI companion. Um, you get it on your phone. It's, you know, they have a free version. It's super easy to use. Um, I think it's very intuitive. Uh, I'd love to hear what others think. How many of you are using co-pilot? Wall of silence. Oh no. Well, <gasps> okay. I guess I'll pipe up again. Who's using yeah. co-pilot? Really? <laughs> John Johnny did a little. Anybody else? Daily. So, yeah. Victor using it all every day. Yes, Victor. Victor, you're using it every day. I love that. Do you want to share how? Well, a little bit of little bit of personal news. So after 14 years, I'm back at Intel. Started oh, on my Monday. Oh my gosh! So oh my news. gosh! But also, not just job related, but even prior to returning, um, one case using it with a, a well, 
I'm back at Intel, but I, I saw some other clients in my previous role, um, marketing content, uh, strategies about how to make LinkedIn posts, um, basically anything I would normally go to Google for, I'm using Copilot. It's totally. not just giving me search results, it's giving me resources. Yes. It's asking prompting other questions. It's learning yes. about my behavior. And you're going to see Copilot really accelerate in the next couple of months. It's going to get bigger and bigger. Um, yes. I just find it like it really is that assistant. And Lisa, I have to give you credit. You were working on, you know, you were talking about how you were using your AI, you know, months ago, you know, every day you talk to it, this and that. I wasn't quite caught up to where you were, but Copilot's become that a little bit for me. Not to the degree that you're using it, but I, I really can't imagine doing too much searching or hunting for anything, shopping, promo codes, um, looking for white papers, just things I'm looking for. It's finding and it feels like there's a team, like it just feels so much more uh, responsive than Google. Yes, I, Victor, I agree 100% with everything. Claire, do you have a question or some input? You're, there we yeah, go. Yeah, I had a question as well, which is, um, I'm just using chat GPT kind of all day long for all sorts of different things. And I was wondering, you know, kind of what people's thoughts were about Copilot as opposed to chat GPT. You know, I feel like once you get onboarded into a certain community, you become a bit, you know, not necessarily loyal, but you can become used to it. And so I was just wondering if there are advantages and things I'm missing out on by not really trying out Copilot. Yeah, I love that, Claire. And um, so the, the, this is some, these are screenshots of what the Copilot um, on your phone interface looks like, just to, to, to kind of get a sense uh, of it. Um, I also included this slide, which is what about ISIS? Because as Victor you know, it, it intimated, I I call my chat GPT mobile ISIS, and she's the, you know, I, she's the one that I've been going to before I downloaded Copilot. Um, on the right here, you can see the difference between the chat GPT interface um, on mobile versus um, Copilot. And it's a really good question, you know, which one, which one, and it's funny, I was just thinking about this the other day, I do feel that whoever gets the, the bulk of users early is going to be a winner here um, because you do get kind of attached to the, you know, as you start interfacing directly with um, your LLM, there is a bit of an attachment that, that you start forming, right? Um, in my view, I've been using both. And I think that they're both good for different things. You know, this, um, this is an example of cartoonize yourself. This was a, a GPT. So one benefit that, um, that GPT's mobile experience has right now is you have access to all of the GPTs that are being built by the community now, like the G through the GPT store. And there's a lot of cool ones. And so this like cartoon yourself one, I just pull, I like found it in a second, pulled it up and uploaded my photo and it made this fun thing in like a second flat, right? So, um, so that's a cool feature. Right now I'm using them a little differently depending upon um, varying factors. Um, so it's too early for me to have a, to have a, a winner right now. Honestly, though, this is so huge that if you're in marketing and comms, I would get both. Uh, I would pay for both and I would use both. Um, it's, it's super important. This will change the way we search for information period. Um, I use the analogy in my, in my, in my newsletter, and I'm sorry if this is repetitive to some of you, but can, you know, some of us are older now, you remember maybe how you had to use a physical map to get around. And like, I loved using a physical map because I was really good at using a physical map and I didn't want to give up using a physical map to get around because I had you know, developed this amazing skill around it. But you know what, eventually I had to give up the ghost and realize that nobody's going to be using digital, no one's using physical maps anymore. And instead, we just have a device in the car that tells us what to do. I think it's very similar here with the way we use the internet. Right now, we are, you know, we are, we've developed an amazing set of skills to interface with the internet. But you know what, we don't need to navigate the internet in that way anymore. We have someone who will do the navigating for us better than we can. Um, and it's so much easier. Oh my gosh, I couldn't agree more with what Victor said. For example, I was, you know, just, it's just, I, I could go on and on, but I was walking the dog and I was like, I, a question came into my head about some research about, you know, um, a, a company that I needed to understand better. I just spoke it in there and within 30 seconds, it gave me every single bit of information that I needed. It would have taken without that tool. I don't know, hours probably. And I just could keep refining and asking, well, what about this? What about cost of living index? What about the blah, 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 blah? And it just came back time and time again. Now I'm talking about Copilot. Um, I, you know, if I had to make a prediction, um, I do, I, I think, um, I think Copilot might be the one that takes us mainstream. It's a little easier, I think, to use for, for lay people. Um, I don't know what others think. 
I found it, it deep in it. There are some loops. I was talking to Frank Wu about this yesterday. Um, when, with Copilot, uh, when you get into really structured pieces, the other one I would say that everyone should potentially pay attention to is the announcement that NVIDIA just made because now it's giant. But if you have an NVIDIA RTX uh, card, a big video graphics card in your computer, you can download your own kind of build your own GPT that, that NVIDIA is giving you. And that is very interesting because when you worry about intellectual property rights and you know giving things to OpenAI or to Microsoft, feeding the data in that's going to make these AIs even more valuable, um, that NVIDIA play seems very smart uh, to us because we can control that in those models uh, locally and train it on information without sharing it with an outside company. Because that's where we're seeing a lot of problems with yes. clients specifically is the engineer put their proprietary IP into OpenAI and oh ask it questions Nightmare. about their patent or whatever. Yeah, yeah love that. Um, okay, so, uh, can, I, else? can I also add to that uh, discussion a little bit? Because OpenAI's release of uh, Soro totally overshadowed some very significant news from Google that came a day ago as well, and that's the release of Gemini 1.5. And what really stands out in that model is the huge context. So we're, we're talking about 1 million tokens, which is about seven, eight times more than GPT-4 uh, plus version. So that's huge. Essentially, you can put 700,000 words or over 30,000 lines of codes or one hour full video and ask questions about it and analyze it. And it's fascinating because I'm sure everyone here who has used uh, GPTs, pre-trained transformers, context is everything. The quality of the response that you get determ is determined almost proportionally by the input that you give it. So having that opportunity to browse, synthesize, and gain insights from up to 700,000 words, at least to me, is, is, is a massive game changer. And it's just a shame because it happened almost in parallel a little bit before OpenAI saw and totally didn't get the attention that it deserves. Yeah, I love that, Martin. I, I um, have heard from some insiders that work at Google how, I mean, and I guess they're a little biased, but I've heard from others too that, that Gemini is going to be a real contender, that it's it's, a, it's amazing. So thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I want to be mindful of time. So the other big news that I wanted to talk about today um, is Apple Vision Pro. Um, so yeah, Apple Vision Pro um, is 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 here. <laughs> um, who's had a chance? I I've um, I have not been in the Apple Vision Pro, but you may have seen some headlines with Zuckerberg basically saying how much better the the Quest Three is as compared to um, anybody. Okay, yeah. Wanna? I know. Anybody wanna wanna share their perspective if they've been inside the the Apple Vision Pro? So I haven't tried one yet. I need to, but I did just get a FaceTime call from my buddy who works at Apple yesterday, and he didn't tell me he was going to call me from his Vision Pro, but he did. Mm. And I gotta say, this is my first time seeing one of these personas not pre-recorded and like a YouTuber review and like actually just experiencing one. It was very natural. Um, like within probably a minute and a half, I forgot that it was a persona and it just felt like I was on a FaceTime call. There's like little facial gestures and like weird things like with the mouth and stuff, but you forget about it because you know, you're not really staring at their face that closely as you're having a conversation. And I was really impressed. Wow. Something that was unique, though, is he also doesn't have long, flowy hair, which I think makes a difference um, as like hair could look a little action figure and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that's my first like real life interaction with it so far. I was very impressed. I love that. And just for those of you that don't know, if you, you know, just kind of comparing some of the specifications here, um, the, the Apple Vision Pro or AVP for short is avatar based. You, you create an avatar. Um, and if we look at this chart, there's a few other differences. The, the MetaQuest 3 uses hand controllers. The Apple Vision Pro does not. It uses hand and eye tracking. Um, I also was a little surprised to hear here to see the, the Apple Vision Pro is quite a bit heavier than the MetaQuest 3 if we, if, we, if we look at it. And I'll tell you, even 
the three is heavy to me. Like when it's like, I, I still don't like wearing a thing on my head for a long period of time. And, and I do think that these do need to get lighter in order for people to be really comfortable in them. So, uh, and I know they will get lighter, but that's just something else to, to call out here. Um, the other thing that I'll say, and there's, there's some, there's some great, we won't go, I, we don't have time to go into lots of detail here, but um, AWE put out an awesome post on this. I wanted to give a shout out to Nathan and his team, the pros and cons. So um, the link is, is there if you want to do a double click on why people love it and why people hate it. Um, uh, so I'm excited. I have one of my students, Sam Morrison, who has one of these, and he's bringing it down here to, to Eugene to campus on Monday, and I can't wait to, to give he's it a in try. The room. Is, 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 is he here? I didn't... Uh, Yes. Yeah. So everyone is having an experience with it right now. Oh my gosh, I love it. A little bit. I will say it's I, hearing your experience on the FaceTime call. I had sort of the opposite. Well, I, I was calling my dad, and you know, the whole time he was like, "This is crazy. This is crazy." You know, you th this feels like I'm talking to an AI. I'm talking to the, you know, the old uh, uncanny oh valley robot God. woman. Like, <laughs> so maybe that's a maybe that's a a, a him thing, but. I will also say the wow. persona that I started with on whatever version 1.0 versus I think we're on 1.2 or 1.12 or something like that now. And oh my God. I think that what I've got here is I can tell obviously better than two weeks ago even. So wow. the I think the incremental steps that they're going to be able to take with all this data they're getting is going to be a, a quick slope up. I, I yeah, have was, a question was, for you from what I've heard. What I've heard it about the most amazing thing is the lighting. When you can like, and and specifically, we're talking about taking the Iron Man piece and a demo where they moved it from you know actual to real, and how just utterly amazing the lighting and the 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 look is inside yes. there. Yes, and and it's I totally agree because it's all it's so all controlled that it I. You almost lose sight of it and then whenever you take it off you realize oh my lights have been dimmed the whole time because i've been watching tv or something or i've been talking on the phone it'll adjust or you can adjust uh or you can it's sort of like a an immersive scroll you can put in there basically of like if you want a sort of a pink tint on it or like a little bit more of a warm color cold color um and that's just kind of like i think for preference but you can also get these really really incredible the immersive landscapes that come with it um, that you get like daytime, nighttime on. I think you can set it to change with whatever your local time uh, like sunset is too. But yeah, I, I, I agree that the, I mean, that's why this thing is 600 grams, a hundred grams heavier is because of all of the absolutely mind blowing optics and, and lenses and everything in the front. And I'll say, I guess you can't talk it in the persona, but I can't use the single band. I, I think it looks a lot cooler. I think it's a lot more comfortable. I mean, like just itself, but the thing is too heavy. So I have to have the the dual strap that goes over the top of the head. And I'm like, just give me, give me the cool back band and a top head strap. Why do I got to choose? But um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, in a weird way, though, it's way heavier and I have to have the top band and I can keep this thing on way longer than... I mean, I have a Quest Pro and I and I enjoy being in there for a long time, but still, this is that's like I got to kind of try to be in there a long time. And this is very easy to be in for an extended amount of time. Oh, my God. I'm imagining for most of you, this is the first time you're seeing the the AVP uh, avatars. Oh, my gosh. It I is love pretty, the hands. I love the fact that he can it's talk pretty to good. Yes. It's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, and everybody, I'm a very person. you know, just for those of you, yeah, like, no, so, sure. Matt, you know, he, he, he's sitting there with the thing on his head right now, and this is what we're seeing, right? I mean, this is all digital overlay. Um, it, it actually, Ricky, to your point, looks, it's the best I've seen. It's the best I've seen, hands down. Uh, Sam, this is amazing. Like, I don't know if that matters, but thank you. Wow, yeah, uh, that's so cool. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I have a question for you, Sam, actually. Just curious, like I tried to send you a chat earlier. Did you see that? And is there any way for you to respond? Like, or like, um, like you texted me? In no, the chat, in Zoom the chat. Yeah, in the Zoom chat, I sent you a message. Oh, in the Zoom chat? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I just I would have to have the Zoom chat open, which I realize I can now. Um, so I, I can totally respond. It just, either you respond with voice to text, which I just don't do very often. I'm usually around people and stuff. Um, or you can type with your eyes, which is 
when it flows right is feels cr- like very cool and crazy but as soon as you if, if you type more than like one sentence with that like i could sit here and type you guys out a sentence but watch me like pecking at each key space you know what i mean like throughout the whole thing um but yeah it's totally like i did not mean to say echidna um <laughs> it is totally it's so i mean it's like i don't know it's it's everything that you think you can do you probably can and in a more seamless and intuitive way than you think so far yeah. is my experience. Well, thank Mostly. you so much for joining in in giving us this, this all ex- experience. You know, we'll be able to say we were we saw it first and we saw it here. So I think it's one of those moments. So awesome. Um, this feels like a great time to transition to our guest speaker. Again, I want to be we're halfway through. Where does the time go? Um, so I'm going to go ahead, uh, Martin, and um, let you take it away. Um, I, I've got a few starter questions, um, but please, everyone, this is your chance to ask Martin your questions live. So so um, I'll be keeping an eye on chat. And the first question that I have, um, Martin, is if, um, if why don't we kick things off here by discussing um, your experience with XR and immersive in the metaverse and metaverse marketing and what compelled you to write your series of books? Let's start there. Absolutely brilliant. So the reality is that I've been fascinated with alternative realities since childhood. First, it was Star Wars, then The Matrix, so that has been bubbling up in the back of my mind since I was a kid. Then professionally, I started as a writer and gradually evolved toward marketing and marketing leadership roles. Then to cut to the chase, I was headhunted for a head of marketing position at Landvolt, one of the largest metaverse building studios, which is now focused on the MENA region. This exposed me to the hundreds of metaverse activations and build we can build for clients. And in parallel with that, because I always like to be at the edge of where research and thinking is, I started writing a newsletter called Metaverse Marketing with long form pieces discussing various aspects of the metaverse, well researched with anything from 30 to 100 uh, references. And around the same time, the Metaverse Insider also recognized me among the top 30 metaverse marketing professionals globally, and I joined the European Blockchain Association. So these experiences and exposure, coupled with my knowledge of marketing and passion for research, propelled me to write numerous pieces covering emerging metaverse topics and the role of AI in its development. And these became the backbone of the book trilogy. And book one is like a best analysis of the metaverse covering its political, economic, social, technological, environmental, legal, and ethical aspects. Then book two covers metaverse use cases across various industries, including fashion and retail, tourism, education, healthcare, industry, and others. And of course, book three that you're familiar with, it embodies my original vision and covers all aspects of metaverse marketing. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Martin. And one of the things that drew me to your book was um, how in depth and and the detail around the new set of uh, KPIs and you know key performance indicators that market it, marketers need. You had a great article on LinkedIn about that, and that is actually how I found the book to begin with. Um, so let's go right into um, how are brands and marketing teams successfully benefiting from XR and the metaverse, and and maybe touch on what are some of the new set of KPIs that that brands care about now with our new immersive tool set. Yeah. I'll cover uh, both aspects. And actually, it's crucial to speak about KPIs because otherwise Metaverse and XR is just a toy. And instead for brands to be utilizing it consistently and at scale, they need to be able to demonstrate return on investment for their stakeholders. Let's first cover the first aspect of the question. So brands and marketing teams are increasingly leveraging XR and the Metaverse to revolutionize how they engage with customers, offering a blend of immersive experiences, personalization, and community building, which were previously unattainable through traditional media. First, the XR and the metaverse enable brands to create deeply immersive experiences beyond passively viewing and moving people to active participation. For example, imagine a fashion enthusiast attending a virtual runway show where they can interact with the designs in real time, try them on their avatar, and even instantly purchase their digital or physical counterparts. This level of engagement enhances the consumer's connection 
to the brand and then significantly boosts the memorability of that experience. Secondly, the metaverse offers unparalleled opportunity for hyper-personalization. And of course, the more data a brand or the host of the experience has about their customers, the better that personalization can be. And with the help of AI, we can get even more granular. granular. Through AI and data analytics, brand can understand individual consumer preferences and behaviors within these virtual environments, which allows them to tailor the experiences, recommendations, and products in ways that resonate on a personal level, which can then create more sales and more engagement from the audience, which creates more data, and it creates a positive flywheel, which generates more data, more personalized recommendations, and more sales. So it's like a positive circle, which keeps spinning. Moreover, the metaverse fosters community and belonging, which is vital for brand loyalty. Brands can build entire ecosystems where users not only engage with the brand, but also with each other. And these communities can be centered around shared interests, activities, or values, creating a strong emotional bond between the consumer and the brand. For instance, a gaming company can create exclusive events or challenges within the metaverse, bringing fans together in a shared adventure that enhanced the community spirit. And equally, when I was working with Landvold, we'd, we'd seen that gamification was almost always a part of the activation that brands were creating. And lastly, integrating technologies like blockchain and NFTs within the metaverse enables brands to offer unique digital assets that can carry value both within and outside the metaverse. And this opens new revenue streams and allows consumers to have ownership and stake in the brand's virtual world to further deepen their engagement and loyalty. So just to wrap up that and conclude, by leveraging XR and the Metaverse brands are not just selling products or services, but they offer memorable experiences, personalized engagement, and a sense of community that enriches the consumer brand relationship. This innovative approach reshapes marketing strategies and set a new standard for consumer engagement in the digital age. So that's a brief overview of the first aspect of that question. And then if we move to the second one, which is, if not more critical about KPIs, to effectively measure the return on investment in the metaverse brand, need to focus on a streamlined set of KPIs that capture both the immediate impact and the long-term value of their virtual presence. Because especially some of the very popular activations on, Ro on Roblox at the moment may be catering to a, uh, to a younger demographic without too much purchasing power, but undoubtedly there will be significant implications down the line as these people grow up and some of them are indoctrinated to be loyal to specific brands. And these KPIs are essential for assessing how well a brand engages with its audience, how well it retains interest, and how it monetizes its offerings within the digital realms. So starting with first and very obvious one, that's visitors and user acquisition. Tracking the number of unique visitors and new users engaging with the brand's metaverse presence is absolutely crucial, because these metrics indicate the brand's reach, the effectiveness of its marketing efforts, and its ability to attract attention in a rather, let's be honest, crowded digital landscape where many different brands scout and fight for people's attention. Then the second one, of course, is user retention. Percentage of users who return after their first visit reflect uh, how compelling is that metaverse experience. High retention rate suggests that the virtual space offers value and relevance, encouraging users to revisit and engage over time. Gamification, some sort of quest, but typically gaming is something that we enjoy, engage again and again, and it's a good way to retain users and get them back. Then we have engagement and dwell time. Engagement metrics can include uh, activities completed and the time spent in virtual spaces. They measure how actively users participate in the metaverse content. Dwell time or the length of time users spent in these environments also offers insights into the content ability to captivate and maintain interest. And what we were seeing actually were well times very often north of nine, 10 minutes, which is quite impressive for a brand considering that social media engagements last, what, seconds? Maybe you'd spend 
for, for people familiar with, with SEO and metrics on the website, maybe you will get an average one and a half, maybe two minutes on a long form blog piece. So having nine minutes in a virtual activation is really a game changer because that multiple times higher than what you get on other uh, ways of engaging your audience. And then we have heat maps and user movement depending on where the activation is built. And these analytics provide detailed insights into the specific user behavior within that particular metaverse activation, highlighting areas of high activity and potential bottleneck. And such data is invaluable for optimizing the virtual space and its layout and the user interface to enhance the overall experience. And finally, of course, the key question is about sales of virtual items or if linked sales of physical items and tracking the sale of virtual goods such as NFTs and digital wearables helps quantify the metaverse's direct revenue generating capabilities. And this metric is a tangible measure of how well a brand is monetizing its virtual offering. And it's typically the easiest one to use for building a use case for metaverse activation and then proving that it was positive return on investment. Having covered what, what I've seen so far, let's let's take a look ahead a little bit about the integration of AI and blockchain technologies and how they can refine some of these metrics further. For example, AI-driven analytics will enable more personalized and more dynamically adaptable user experiences by analyzing behavior and preferences on a ground level, level and potentially revolutionizing customer engagement and customer service within the metaverse. And then blockchain, on the other hand, promises to improve data security and user privacy, ensuring that the digital identities and transactions within the metaverse remain secure, but at the same time transparent. And at the same time, they can even be anonymous, depending on the choice that an individual makes. So in summary, by focusing on these key metrics and embracing the upcoming technological advancements, brands can effectively navigate the metaverse, optimize their strategies for engagement and monetization, and achieve positive return on investment, which can then help them reinvest and grow their metaverse presence. Awesome, Martin. Thank you so much. I've, I love how organized your information is. I, I feel like you can take notes and basically just have access to your textbooks. You're, you're doing such an awesome job at outlining um, everything and from, you know, so clearly. We do have a question um, from John Hartman. Johnny, what analytics tools for cross-platform engagements um, are available for, for cross-platform in the metaverse? That's a, a great question if you want to talk about any of the analytics tools that come to mind. And um, everybody, we are crawling. We're officially at 20 we have you know, just about 20 less than 20 minutes left so i'm i'm in um roblox this is the gucci land and, and i just wanted to you know kind of as martin is talking about some of these best practices um gucci does an amazing job in in roblox on you know constantly updating this game that you're looking at here is completely different than the one that was here uh, not that long ago. Um, you can see the, there's a leaderboard. I, I spent um, about, I don't know, 30 minutes last night playing this game. Um, it's not exactly my shtick, to be honest. So um, I found some other games that were a little more compelling, but you can see it's quite popular and people are buzzing around. And um, the, the thing that I found to be a little disheartening is like, you have to, you know, you have to be like at the top of the leaderboard to get any free stuff. And I'm like, I have 84 points. And then I saw, oh, others have 47,000 and it's going to take me like months literally of playing 24 seven to get to that. And I was just like, eh, I can't like, I'll just go buy it. So I just went and bought the thing because that's for me, like just easier. Um, so go ahead, Martin, I'll let you, if you want to speak to to the question around analytics platforms here, I just wanted to kind of explain what's happening. Yeah, no, that's brilliant because we're seeing a good combination of both uh, gamification and at the same time uh, introducing competitiveness with that, with the points that you can be gathering and then uh, again, catering to different types of audiences. The people who have more time to engage, to get the points can still monetize them potentially or convert them into gifts. And then other people who have less time perhaps have more purchasing power and are able to buy products. With regards to the other question that was asked, unfortunately, I'm not familiar with that many tools that can be used uh, cross-platform, which part of it is done on purpose so that there is more 
more platform stickiness. Now, the vision of a genuinely, decent genuinely interoperable and decentralized metaverse where many different virtual worlds are seamlessly connected, where you can transfer your data across them. It's, it's something that I talk about and I describe at length in the books. It's a utopian vision that I hope we're going to see within our lifetimes, but at the moment I haven't seen it at, happening at scale. Thanks, Martin. The other thing, so this is the store. And I think the other thing, uh, you know, other than having these fresh games and like really incentivizing people to, you know, be top scorers and giving away stuff, they really make you feel like you have to buy now because I came in, I'm like, oh, the sunglasses, they look great. But then like, uh oh, sold out. Like they're selling out of digital content, people. Like, you know what I mean? Like they don't have to sell out of the digital content, but they are because why? Because they want to create this idea of scarcity. And um, if you go and search on Gucci items in Roblox, you will find that there are resellers selling things for thousands and thousands of Robux. Um, and so they've done a great job. So, you know, when I came and found that this yellow jacket that I love so much was available and I could actually buy it, I was really, you know, um, I, I really was motivated to buy it now because it will eventually sell out and then, you know, I can't get it anymore. So, um, they do a really good job at, at, at making you feel this like, scarcity with a digital item. And, and I know that that also kind of ties into what NFTs right, are sort of meant to do. But they're doing that here without NFTs. I just want to point that out. I mean, you know, I didn't have to have a digital wallet to, to buy my awesome yellow, you know, Louis Vuitton jacket for my avatar. So, um, I, you know, Gucci just time and time again is, is, is killing it. Um, in here, they're they're not only in here; they're in other platforms too. But they do an awesome job here. Um, if anybody has questions, unmute and go for it. Just go ahead and ask Martin your questions. I am going to jump to so so one strategy is to build your own world, very much like Gucci has done here. They they built this um, whole thing. The other thing that is um, an option is to to partner with someone um, and do kind of a, a, you know, what I'd call like a pop-up experience or being brought into someone else's experience. And I wanted to show the difference here because um, I found this experience and this is the second one that I wanted to go to today. So this is Carly Kloss's closet her closet experience, right? Um, and she has this now Adidas pop-up store um, as part of her of her experience. She wants to access my avatar's items because she has like a fashion runway game thing going on. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and click play so you can kind of see what's happening here. Um, but Adidas has built some really cool swag. And so they're capitalizing on, you know, her brand, her audience, her, this experience that she has sent, you know, for all the, the fashionistas out there. And it's quite popular. And you know, when I come in there, there seemingly are a lot of people here. Um, but this is what I wanted to direct your attention to. So this is the pop-up shop and it's really cool. And um, all of these things that you're seeing here um, on the mannequins uh, are available. These change like daily. So I was in I was in the, here last night playing around with this, um, which is a good segue for our very last question, Martin, which I want to get to, which is um, you know staying rooted in the physical world when we're spending so much time in the virtual world. But last night I was spending hours in the virtual world trying to you know get ready for today, um, and these are all different. Like the what they have somehow they've changed all of. These these mannequins to be totally different than what was here last night. So they really are changing it up frequently. I love this look, by the way. This is a really cool look. If I click interact, it allows me to go right into the store. And of course, all of this shit's for sale. <laughs> because why wouldn't it be? Uh, and you can try it on and all the things. So, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting, the different approaches. So um, with that, Martin, do you want to answer... Uh, Life, you know, life balancing, you know, real with virtual when we have these spaces that we're spending more and more time in. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, before I dive into that, I just wanted to make a general observation that still most of the principles around human psychology and structuring an offer, creating urgency, scarcity, etc., they apply to the virtual world. So it's very important to recognize where uh, the fact that we're talking about a new channel or a new platform can change some of the principles, then there are some underlying principles that don't really change. And the closer you adhere to them, uh, the more successful you're going to be. And what is the least changing or, or the slowest changing principles? They apply to human psychology. And that's 
you're basically having a strong, compelling offer, speaking in terms of value and benefits, pointing out problems, and then as we saw, scarcity and urgency, which drives people to purchase now. Yeah. With regards to the bigger question, balancing our lives between the virtual and the physical world is a mode positive challenge that encompasses mental, physical, and environmental well-being, and also the developmental impact on future generations. So as we navigate the realms of the metaverse and AI, it becomes truly really crucial to maintain a harmonious relationship between these two spheres of existence. Reflecting on this balance involves considering mindfulness, the authenticity of self-expression, the environmental footprint of digital technologies, and the upbringing of children who will be digital natives in a more pronounced sense than any previous generation. So starting with the first one, staying grounded in our bodies amidst the allure of virtual world is essential both for mental and for physical health. And Simple practice like mindfulness, being fully present and engaged in the moment, becomes a critical tool in managing our engagement with digital spaces. It encourages us to recognize when virtual interactions detract from our physical well-being and to make conscious choices about how and when to immerse our, ourselves in digital environments. Regular disconnection from digital devices and engagement in physical activities, where it's time in nature, dancing, walking, working out, sex can help maintain this balance, promoting a healthy lifestyle that values the tangible world. The other critical dimension in my view is the authenticity versus escapism balance. Digital avatars offer unprecedented opportunities for self-expression, allowing individuals to represent themselves in ways that might be impossible in the physical world. However, this freedom also poses the risk of self-avoidance, where the digital persona becomes a mask behind which one hides from reality. And the key to balancing self-expression with escapism wives lies in self-awareness and intentionally and thinking about how we craft our digital identity. And it's about using these avatars not to escape from our true selves, but to explore aspects of our identity in a manner that complements our physical existence. Then the third uh, element or aspect that I want to talk about is environmental consideration. The metaverse and AI are powered by data centers and computing resources that have a significant environmental impact due to their energy consumption and carbon footprint. And I cover that at length in one of the chapters from, from the first book about the environmental impact. And as we embrace these technologies, it's vital to advocate for and support sustainable practices within the tech industry, including using renewable energy resources and more efficient computing technologies. And by the way, advancements in these fields are happening in parallel with the development and growth of AI and virtual world. And balancing our uh, digital aspirations with environmental responsibility is going to ensure that our virtual explorations do not come at the expense of our planet health. And one way to, to also facilitate that is by replacing physical experiences with digital experiences where this would result in conserving actual resources. Visiting a place virtually instead of traveling to get there is the typical go-to example. And finally, the implications for digital natives. Children growing up in this digital age will have a fundamentally different relationship with technology. The metaverse and the AI will be integral to their socialization, education, and entertainment. And while these technologies offer vast opportunities for learning and creativity, there is a profound need to guide children in navigating these spaces responsibly. And this involves teaching digital literacy, fostering critical thinking about online interactions, and ensuring that children understand mm -hmm. the value of offline experiences and human connections as a fundamental pillar for building long, healthy, and sustainable lifestyle. And it's about preparing them to thrive in both worlds, using technology as a tool for enhancement rather than a substitute for real life experiences. So just to include these thoughts, uh, balancing our lives between the virtual and the physical realm 
demands mindfulness, intentionality, commitment to sustainability, and ethical technology use. And as we forge ahead into the future, the choices that we make today, both individually and collectively, will shape how well we maintain this balance. And it's about creating a future where technology enhances human experience without diminishing the value of the physical world and human connections that form the essence of being a human being. Thank you, Martin, so much. I want to try to get to as many questions as we can. And um, <clears throat> Sam had had a question for you, Martin, which is, um, which types of uh, AI tools um, are you or are others using for market research? Brilliant question. Uh, so as you mentioned, uh, the start, there is a little bit of first mover advantage and a little bit of getting stuck into what you're familiar with. I tend to be a chat GPT plus junkie with all the integration and uh, now it has browser capability, browsing capability as well. But the all, it's the plugins that you can use. So I use that extensively, but Copilot is equally good. And I use Cloud, uh, which I don't think we discussed today at length because at the moment the, the free version of Cloud is the one that, allow, that can allow the biggest context. So if I want to write something short on the back of, let's say summarizing a book, if I want to get insight from a book, I would use Cloud. For most of my other needs, I would use uh, GPT plus, and then uh, Copilot if it's just beginning uh, high level research on a topic that will generate me some links. But ninety percent of my work is Chat GPT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I use it. By the way, we, with with the specific of the of the of the question, specifically for market research, and even if it's just describing specifically what the product is, it's very good at drawing on its knowledge and then generating insights on the ideal customer profiles. Awesome. So I'm um, I'm looking at a few other spaces that we're at time. We've got two minutes, um, but I just wanted if you're if you're into to looking at really cool stuff, this Swedish house mafia DJ world is one of the best um, I've seen. It's it's beautiful um, and really really interesting. The other one that I just really want to give a shout out to before I let everyone go, um, especially around bringing in the audience in a really unique way, is Wonka World. Um, and I'll I'll share that. So so this one and, and just you know, while you're looking for yeah. that, Lisa, mm -hmm. if I can just kindly ask anyone who has engaged with the book and enjoyed it to leave an Amazon review, that would yeah. be hugely appreciated. I really enjoyed being here as well. So I would be massively grateful if you can just drop your thoughts. That feedback would help me as well. Yes. For potential future work. Yes, thanks, Martin. Um, thank you so much for for being here. We can we can start wrapping it up. Um, everyone, thank you all. We, we're at our tight hour. Um, I can stick around for a few more questions. Um, big round of applause for for Martin. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with my students and with my XR pub crawlers to share your expertise, Martin. And I hope that this is just the beginning of you and I getting to work together. I would love to get you out to AWE. Um, I know we, we you know. That would be amazing to be able to meet in person and, and really bring you into our community. Um, so so thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks Absolute to everyone pleasure. that was here. Absolute pleasure. Yay. Thanks so much for having me. Really enjoyed the interaction and the questions. And I hope I meet some of you in person. Awesome. Thanks. And um, for those of you that want to stick around for a few minutes, um, those of you that, that go, I hopefully I'll see you next month. Um, but the rest of you, um, we can talk a little bit more about Roblox and some of the experiences that I that I got into and what was so great about them. Um, I think that, you know, there from my perspective, there's table stakes, right? The table stakes for, for Roblox right now is you have to drop new stuff all the time. Like you just have to do it. Um, and Gucci, as I said, is doing a great job with that. Um, you know, if you, if you put something in here and it gets stale, no one's going to, it's done. Like no one's going to come back. And so it literally, it's really about that fresh content. I mean, we're back to that age old marketing challenge, which is you got to produce, keep, keep that content wheel cranking. It's just not slowing down and it's not getting any easier. The good news is that many of our AI tools are helping us be able to scale and crank out more and more content. I mean, that's one of the things that AI can help us with. But um, Sam, I, I I was really thinking of you when I went into this Wonka 
Wonka experience. This was a little bit unique in the way it is a curated, very, very cool experience that you get to go into Wonka's factory. Um, the This is different than anything that I have seen yet um, on, on, on Roblox. Um, they do an amazing job with telling a story, making it interactive, featuring the, the users get to be the star, like you get to be the mean girl or the nerdy girl or the, you know, whatever. And they really feature you in a very, very cool way. Um, I I played, spent most of my time last night in this and I would have kept going, but my iPad died and it was too late and I had to go to bed. Um, this one really roped me in. And so if you're a storyteller, if you're interested in doing, you know, any kind of brand storytelling or interactive storytelling, um, go check out Wonka's story. Um, it's, it's just so, well done um, and people were flocking to it the other night so that's a that's a, a, a recommendation to, to, to try out any questions or any other thoughts um, here I'll stop sharing we can start thinking about wrapping things up it's so good to see everyone Kelly I want to give a shout out to Kelly and Brad and um, MK Arkin all of y'all there's that are here Oscar of course so good to see you back Hey Lisa, you you keep a blog or something? I mean you I mean you cover a mile a minute here. Um, <laughs> what, do you keep a blog of just uh, you know what you're doing, uh, or is there a curriculum that I can uh, look at to see what all the great work on uh, the ground you're covering? Oh my goodness! Well, so you know I've recorded this, and I and so I have a whole playlist of these. Um, I also um have my website that has some. I, you know I, I'm woefully behind at keeping my website updated, but there's some stuff there. Um. Brad, okay. um, but no worries. You know, you know what? Here's the best. The best thing is um, the newsletter, the 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 marketing. If you're subscribed to my newsletter, you're gonna get all of it. Um, I share, Perfect. yeah, I share all the resources in that. That's probably the best way to to keep up to date. But thank you for the question. I know no, there's just there's so much. so much, and you know, meeting every month, you know, like this forces me forces my hand to really get in and like find the most compelling things that are happening and, and stay fresh. So I love doing it. And I, and I can't believe Sam, you came in your headset. So amazing. That was one of those. That we I, ever... I was 10 minutes late. I was like, oh I had to God. like get in here and sign in on everything. And of get course, into Zoom. of course, like, oh, every um... time we do this thing, there's always a moment. And the moment we had tonight was with you. So thank you <laughs> so much. It's so weird to super see happy you. To this. So weird. You guys, it's weird. I was thinking one thing I have realized in these phone calls is like, I feel like I'm sitting here like this and my, my persona looks, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's professional, but it looks like I'm paying attention and maybe dour, right? Like I'm, I'm <laughs> here and this yeah. uh, smiling as big as I can. And it does a great job. Like all, all this mouth stuff is cameras. It's not, you know, on meta, it's all faked. Like the mouth movement is fake, but this I'm like, mm, I can stick my tongue out and like not uh... make noise. You know what I mean? Like, and if I'm smiling and having a good time and we're joking around as happy as I can look, I'm smiling as hard as I can. That's all you get. That's all you get is like a little bit amused at best. And I'm like, that's a kind of a big deal. Yeah, like if this thing is supposed to be something that you're calling people and interacting with people on and the absolute best positive face you can get is like, that was fine <laughs> is going to is going to be that's a I don't know. I mean, you, you can't, you, you're going to like, that sucks. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how they fix it. Cause it's like, it's sitting sort of on my cheekbones there. And I can't, you know, if I raise it up too high, it tells me to pull it back down, all this kind of stuff. Wow. So they'll fix that. Yeah. They'll fix that. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, you could, you could do. Yeah. I, I'm not going to tell them how to do their job, but yeah, for uh, sure. I love it. Is that me? Um, is the shirt. So are they, is that your real shirt? That high neck maroon thing? Or is that, is that, is that not real? It was the shirt. It's the sweater I was wearing when I made the persona, ah, which I didn't realize when I did yeah. it, but it, I'm, I think it worked out just fine. It's yeah. the same thing. It's like my hair is a little bit different. My, my, it's mostly the same, but my beard's different. That kind of thing. Like, or no, I'm sorry. This, the, the beard is a camera. So that gets, that's probably going to stay the same, but the, obviously my haircut's not going to change and it gives me the weird, I'm touching. You can't see. It gives me a weird <laughs> little like cone head bump. It does. A little bit. It does. I see that. Uh, but all of this was worse two weeks ago. You know, the eyes were wow. weirder and the face was softer. So they're and, just and... constantly updating it. Oh my yeah. gosh. I think I'm going to have to get one of these things. It's just depressing because they are so expensive. <laughs> 
yeah, everyone needs a, a second mortgage and then we can all have big Zoom calls and, and FaceTimes and stuff. Man. Well, thanks everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this was this was fun for me. I loved it. I felt like we covered a lot of ground today. Um, I will see you all next month, if not sooner. Um, I'll send the recording out soon. So have an amazing weekend. It's Friday. Yay. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks. Thanks, yeah, everyone. Thank Take good care. Bye. Right.